Hi guys, and welcome to another Today's Task. For today's task, I am fixing a huge problem that has occurred since I bought tracks for my four-wheeler. When I bought this four-wheeler, I knew it would be capable of plowing some pretty heavy snow, and it did great. The only problem is, is if the snow gets too heavy, Good if the snow gets too heavy, my tires will just spin and I don't go anywhere anymore. But now that the tracks are on for the season, this thing becomes a bulldozer. It doesn't stop in the snow at all. It's, um, it's incredible the difference it makes. So if you're on the fence about getting tracks, do it. You won't regret it. Here's the caveat is now my plow is too small. I have a small plow, that sounds weird to say. My plow's not too small, guys, I, it's really not. The problem is, is I don't have any room now, so the plow can go forward without any problems, but if I pivot it, like so, I'm not even in full pivot position, I'm touching this track, and that's a huge problem, and vice versa. So realistically, what I need to do is lengthen my plow. It's gonna sound weird no matter how you say it, but that's just what we gotta do. So let's get started on that task now. It feels so good to work in this garage now that I've replaced this garage light. It's still small, tight space, a lot of stuff fitting in here, but at least it's dry, it's relatively warm, and if I put my heater on in here, it gets really hot, but it's well lit now. And if you haven't seen that video on how I put that light in, I will link that in the description, so check it out. First things first, gotta disconnect. The first thing is always first. I don't know why YouTubers and myself always say first things first. I mean, first things last. We need to disconnect our plow, but I don't want to just drag it all the way out. I want to get my measuring tape out and see how much distance I'm going to actually need. Realistically, this is where I need this plow to be. I probably should have left the tires on with the plow and done a measurement to see how big that gap was, uh, but I didn't. I'm here now. I just know I need to clear this gap. Going off this distance here, I need to know how far back from one of the mounting points I'm gonna go. And this shows seven and a half, but I think, I think honestly, I did a measurement earlier and I was roughly about nine inches and I think that's where I wanna stay. So I know I'm gonna extend this nine inches for sure. There we go, it's his own stand. Oh, baby. Well, I don't know what I was expecting. Bigger wrench. There you go. Yeah, buddy. We're in business now. Now with that piece that we can't alter, just kind of set aside out of the way. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space right here so that the new bar can slide over top and then slide over these bars as well. And that will be my lengthening pipe. But in order to know the diameter of this and the exact dimensions, I really want to cut it and look at it. I'm going to measure up two inches on both. I mean, we're not building a watch. Now we can cut. We don't have an extension cord. Holy canola. So we're going to be in big trouble. Now we can take a measurement on this. That is an inch and three quarters. And that's what we want the inner diameter of our new pipe to be. I went and picked up some pipe at a local like fabrication shop. And the cool part is, is they'll sell by the foot. Um, which some places don't. Some places will make you buy it in a 20 foot stick, which I don't need 20 feet of that pipe. That'd be a hundred bucks. That'd be ridiculous at that point. So I sell it for pretty cheap, but not only that, they cut it for me. So they're both identical lengths. Oh, baby. You might be thinking, hey, this is bigger than nine inches, but I accounted for roughly two inches here and two inches here that I'm gonna be bolting through. So they really had to be a little bit longer than just nine inches, but that'll give me overall nine inches, I think. Now we're gonna drill holes here, and then here, through these, and then 
chain them up and call it good. I know I'm two inches into that. So roughly my pipe ends up here. I'm gonna go one inch in and call it good. That'll be where I drill my hole. And I'm gonna drill them on the side because if I lift this up and there's a bolt here, I don't want it to hit underneath the four-wheeler frame at all and impede my height. So we're gonna go to the side. And I definitely recommend using a really small bit to begin with to get your pilot hole done and then work your way up. And I will link this drill in the description. <laughs> this is awesome. These are being bolted. And what I like is the steel actually butts against this brace rather than just pivots on the screw because those screws could shear really easy. But with it butting against the steel, I think it'll be really good. And it's a nice tight fit. So now we'll put these on. And because now if I just drill these like this, I could run into squaring issues, I'm definitely gonna bolt our piece back in that I really didn't want to, but at least made it easier to cut these now. Oops. So well, that's original length now. Okay. I do need some clamps though. I'm just gonna clamp that right there for right now. Oh, these bits are so dull. Oh. Oh. That's the worst possible thing that could have happened. I am not entirely sure how I'm gonna get that out of there because drill bits are hard as nails. They are so tough but we'll at least drill this other side while we're at it. Well, that's one side done. Now to fix that disaster over there. Oh, that's dreadful. Is it just me or does this plow look like it's nine inches longer? That's incredible. Let's try it to the machine and see how it does. just for a nutritional breakfast. So it's bolted up all the way tight. It is painted and ready for plowing. And now this tank of a beast of a four-wheeler becomes an unstoppable plow for the new property because it is going to be a bear cat to plow that entire driveway in the years to come. And this machine has got years of life left. So for a cheap amount of money, I was able to adjust that plow. Buying the real bars for it and the extension parts for it, it was gonna cost me two, $300. So it was a task that I was able to just kind of put a little ingenuity into, not crazy kind of uh, tools, and it worked. So if you've got something like that at your house, do it yourself, try it. You can only screw it up, I guess. I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Now, and I've already so bright outside. So let's get started on that. Oh man, that is so bright. And measured the distance between the tires when the top, sorry. So going off this measurement here, I need to know how, I know. Oh man. Somebody take your body and then somebody get the garbage can. Turn me, or pause the TV until you're done. Boston, you go grab the garbage can. It's empty, so it'll be light. Okay, Bob, Lincoln, don't do that. Put your coat and gloves on, okay. so if you fall, you land on, you're covered, okay? Oh, but shut the gate all the way. <laughs>